Joel 2 verse 28 And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. It is time to spread the undiluted gospel to the dying world. An expository moment wrapped up with the power of the Holy Ghost. This is Pure Gospel Moment with Mac Miracle. Get set for an encounter with a God who changes identity. I believe that God is about to do something great. Preventing heartbreak in courtship and marriage. Pastor, the boy did bad. <laughs> Pastor, the girl did bad. Calm down, let me talk to you. No, 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 Pastor, you don't understand. Calm down. No, 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 Pastor, you don't understand. But calm down first. Pastor, you don't know what I am passing through now. We just want to prevent that thing. That was the day I made an illustration and I brought that money. I said, who wants this money? And somebody ran after that money. And I said, the same way this guy ran after this money, if you can run after this teaching, that way, no, nobody will break your heart. Are you hearing me? I have experienced heartbreak. So I want to teach you the way you will not experience heartbreak. My wife has never experienced heartbreak. I was her first person that she said yes to. And before she even said yes, she said to her father we know. I said, which kind begin and meet like this? She told me the father we know, the mother we know, all those things. I was like, what kind of child did I meet like? But if I was judging she was a child, I would have landed myself in a problem. I would have landed her in a problem. Now, I was judging she was a child, she was a child, but she was doing what the Bible demands. And yesterday, that last two law class, she stood there and said she has never experienced love. And that dawned on me that she was saying the truth. I was the first man she said yes to. I met her when she was 17. We were just as friends then. I didn't propose. All of a sudden, we entered the same school together. All of a sudden, we graduated to finish together. And I know all of our step in that. Even in that, I made myself open. Even in the school, she made her, it open to the parents that this man. So it was me from the day one. I cooked the food and I ate the food. So, I am telling you now that you can prevent heartbreak to the young ones now who are here who have not had any friends. And to you who is in friendship too, you can tell that story that I never had an heartbreak. Depends on what you call a heartbreak. The heart is the engine of life. Have you ever heard about the door knock engine? When somebody breaks your heart, car will not move. The person has knocked the engine. Therefore, what happens to the heart determines your biological, your physiological, your spiritual outcome. The things that happen to your heart determines how your life will be. And you have transpired aggression. Maybe somebody had an issue with another person and you are talking to the person shout out, you know, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, and you did not have any issue with the person. Transferred aggression. It is what happens to the person's heart. That the person is transferring to you. Transferred aggression. Heartbreak. Heartbreak leads to suicide. Heartbreak leads to untimely death. Heartbreak leads to drug abuse. Heartbreak leads to so many ills in the society. Both to you breaking hearts and the one that their heart has been broken. Both of you are suffering the same thing. So you won't be at rest. The person won't be at rest. Can we prevent heartbreak? Yes, we can. We can prevent heartbreak. The white man said prevention is better than cure. Prevention of heartbreak is better than counseling. You can prevent it before looking for counseling. Prevention is better than cure. First Corinthians chapter 16 verse 14 says, Do everything in love. Do everything in love. With relationship, do it. Your every action must be done with what? With love. I love this trans, uh, uh, this uh, version. Every of your action coming to church is love. Come 
Loyalty is love. Relationship is love. We are not talking about this love that is all over the place. Now we are talking of the real love. Can you raise or to cut yourself and say, I wounded myself. Wow. Wow, I wounded myself. See, blood is coming out. I wounded myself. And you are just enjoying it. Can you do that to yourself? So if you can't do that to yourself, it means you love yourself. That is the same thing you shouldn't be able to do to another person. That is the kind of love I'm talking about. Everything must be done with love. So if there has been a heartbreak, that means there was never a love. There was never love in such relationship. Once hatred is blessed, the outcome of such relationship becomes disastrous. Once what? Hatred is blessed. The outcome of such relationship becomes disastrous. So the first thing is to watch against hatred. But once you hate somebody, Heartbreak, that is welcome, good morning. We are getting closer to heartbreak. So when once you start hating that man, once that man starts hating you, let me just tell you the truth. Heartbreak has started meandering in. Because hatred will dispel love. That is why everything must be done in maturity. Some people have broken up together without heartbreak. Say, you know, this relationship is not going anywhere. Can we stop it? They do it maturely and they stop. And when you discover too that this person is not taking you anywhere, that is the way you can break out without breaking the person's heart with maturity, not with hatred. You know why? Because you might meet that person in the future. And that person might be in, a, in an up company you want to apply. So you don't need to scatter, break each other's cells because you want to break out. You don't need break, heartbreak for you to leave somebody. One of the best ways to protect your heart is to be careful who you give it to at the first instance. Be careful who you give it to at the first instance. One of the best ways is just to know the person you give it to at the first instance. The best lover on earth is not the one who can serve you breakfast early in the morning. It's not the one who can take you around the world. Say, you know that this is, I will take you around the world. I love you. I will serve you breakfast before you wake up. I will wash your clothes. The man is telling the woman now, I wash your clothes. I will do this for you. I will do that for you. That is not the best love on earth. The best love on earth is not the one who will wake you up with a peck. That is not the best lover on earth. The best lover on earth is the man or the woman who fears God. Somebody ask me why. Say why. Someone who fears God cannot slap you. Someone who fears God cannot lie to you. Someone who fears God cannot tell you that he loves you when he actually hates you. Someone who fears God cannot disappoint you. So the best lover on earth is not actually the one who can peck you to tell you good morning with a peck. He's not actually the one who can say, I will leave you to the moon, take you around the world. That is not the best lover. It's the one who fears God. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 12 says, Hatred Stairs up conflict, but love covers all multitude of sins. Take a look at First John chapter four verse eight. First John chapter four verse eight says, "Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. Anyone who does not love does not know God." Because God is love. The one who does not love does not know God because God is love. So the one that will not break your heart is the one who knows God. Because who, the one who knows God knows how to love. Leave all these things, people. People are camouflaging love these days. You think love is come out in the evening, let's go and eat in a joint, drink, go for party. You know the way he takes care of me on my best day, he will be the first to call me. He will be the one to bring the cake to court. I'm telling you the truth. If you like, take it for pastor or don't take it. Leave it if you don't want it. I'm telling you the truth. That is not the love. 
Because after all this, I have seen people who they shower with money, yet they beat them up. I have seen people who they shower with money, yet they didn't marry those persons. The man will say, I was doing all this because I wanted you, I have had you, what to ask. But the person who fears God will follow you with the fear of God. The person will not beat you up. The person will not break your heart. The person will protect your heart. The person will guide and protect your money if she's a lady. You need someone who fears God, not the one who just loves you. They're talking about heartbreak. Love becomes corrosive when you give your heart to the wrong person. I have said this over and over. If you know me, you know I've been saying this over and over. Love becomes corrosive when you give your heart to the wrong person. It becomes dangerous when you give your heart to the wrong person. Hi, people. The people are enjoying love. People are, people are just making it in life with love. Who can have that relationship with shining? Who can have the love themselves? Why is my own like this? Love becomes corrosive. The person you give your heart is not the person you should have given your heart. Love becomes corrosive when you give your heart to the wrong person. The book of Romans chapter 13 verse 10. Romans chapter 13 verse 10. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling of the law. Love does not harm. Love does not break heart. So if anybody breaks your heart, threatens to break your heart, the person from the first inside, instance does not love you. Love does no wrong to the neighbor. Love, therefore, is the fulfillment of the law. Peter chapter 4 verse 8 I'm laying an introduction above all keep loving one another endlessly since love covers multitude of sin what you do about sin what led to heartbreak you wronged me I wronged you and love does what covers multitude of wrong so the person doing great things for you spoiling you with all manner of things manner money or these things if his heart cannot cover multitude of sin, he will break the heart. That's why you, you need someone who knows God. Not no one, someone who tells you, I know how to love. Above all, above that gift, above that promises, above that I will do this for you, above that I will not do this to you. Keep your love for one another at full strength. Full strength. Since love covers multitude of sin. I used to say this, you think my wife does not wrong me, sometimes I'm a liar. If I tell you I don't wrong her sometimes, I am a liar. We'll wrong each other like this, we'll just smile and forget about it. If I wrong her, wrong her, wrong her, she don't even say, I beg go and bring Lido, let me flog you. She will and bring Lido, we'll play Lido, forget about everything. Come, let me teach you, come, let's read the book together. Come, let's pray together. Forget about all those problems. Problem happens. But if you are not with the right person, the person will capitalize on that problem to break out. But the person who loves you will look at you and say, this problem that is happening, you know, if I leave this girl, the next person I will carry that I want to marry, that will see the problem. The next man I will meet, that will see the problem. So why not train myself on how to overcome problems? Hallelujah. Factors to consider in order to avoid heartbreak. What are the factors I should consider in order to avoid heartbreak and courtship? That is the first one we talk about. Then we will talk about factors to consider in order to avoid heartbreak in marriage. There is heartbreak in courtship. Courtship is a relationship now. When you are you both of you are planning to get married, that is courtship. When you are now married, there is heartbreak in marriage. Too. I think in social media they say there's serious issue with two, two faced Dibia and the wife and Annie. There are so many other marriages, don't do DK and the, the celebrity marriage. Yes, and there are so many other we read them up on social media. There are things you should know. This thing I'm telling you, if they put in place, it won't happen. What's happening? I'm telling the truth. Because the Bible cannot lie. The first one, factors to consider in order to avoid. Heartbreak in courtship, in relationship. 
Number one, compatibility factor. Somebody say compatibility factor. I'm not hearing you. You will not bite your mask. Don't be afraid. Say compatibility factor. Somebody say compatibility factor. Say it again. Say compatibility factor. You have you heard of compact disc CD CD player? It means that circumference of that CD was designed for a gadget that has also the same diameter uh, centimeter width of that CD. That is why compact disc. Our hard drive has compact disc, inbuilt compact. It is compact. If you bring a disc, there is this disc rep, uh, record they used to play those that are black, that is bigger. If you squat it in to a compact disc receptor, it will enter. Do you understand me? So your compact disc fits into a compact disc player. Compatibility factor means that this is my size. This is my what I need. This fits me. Like my wife will be like, talk anything you want to. She fits me, I fit her. Two of us we fit together. In height, we love. In color, white and black must meet now. Anything you want to talk. I talk too much, she does not talk too much. Yes, compatibility, that is how it should be. You look for somebody that you are compatible with. If you don't leave these foundations, I'm telling you, number one, follow me keenly. Praise the Lord. So, for compatibility factor means you will look out for somebody. Do you know that when I was looking at her at that time, I was saying, this one fits me. This one does not have too many friends. And me, if you know me, if you know your pastor, Pastor McMiracle too much, I don't have too many friends. If I have too many friends, you will know it on my social media now. Today, when I post, you see me with another person. Next tomorrow, I, another person. I'm posting with another person. And no, no, no. I don't have any friend like that. The only friend I have is all of you here. And you have, anybody who is my friend is my wife's friend. Any person my wife knew, I know. I have a young lady back. She was my friend. And I introduced her to my wife. She became my wife's friend. That is how I do. I have some of you here. I just met you. The next thing I did was to introduce to my wife. I knew what I was doing. Because my wife, my friend must be her friend. Her friend must be my friend. And there is some person who look at, baby, we agree together. This person stops. And the person stops. Compatibility was factor. They could they ask these people they day for this was they day. This kind of men they they day. This kind of women they day, yes, they day. Compatibility factor. What are the compatibility factors? What should you check as compatibility? I will not just say write down compatibility. And I say I've talked about compatibility. What are the things? When we finish teaching this, in, what is like, sir, what, sir, how will I know my right mind? Somebody in the love class group, if you saw it, asked me a question. And I posted something. Somebody sent me a message, sir, you have not answered the question I sent you on your DM. And I replied the person, the question you sent, have an answer to yourself. Who read that thing? Because some questions that they don't even need answers. The person is like asking me, when will I know some sort? Don't worry, I'll remember. That is a personal issue. Now, on the compatibility factors, what should I search out for to know that this thing is compatible with me? Number one, denominational compatibility. Denomination means church. Denomination means what? Church. Denominational compatibility. The birth of a confused family starts when the man and the woman have different pastors and church they attend. I've told you this before. Denominational compatibility. To avoid disagreement, conflicting characters and belief systems, you too must listen to the same prophet, the same pastor. What God has joined together, no church should put asunder, no pastor should put asunder, no prophet should put asunder. You must not have another pastor. Your person you want to get married to have another pastor. Let's stop deceiving ourselves. The truth must be told the way the truth is. Change the pure gospel. 
For me today, I want to, we open the church and we God say, open the church. Call it. I say, God, which name should I call this name? Church. He said, pure gospel, Satan. I say, how? He said, you are going to preach the pure gospel. Pure, not everybody has said the truth, but I tell the truth the way it is. If you want it, take it. If you don't want it, you, now you go see they come for prayer. But none of you will come back for prayer. But people who think, and this one is talking that they still come back at the later on when their mates have gone far. That time they come back. Look at what you are telling me. But I've told you. Because what I am telling you from the Bible, you can't have two different pastors. Imagine as I'm here, my wife is in another program. And she now comes back and says, Do you know that a man of God taught us something today? And the man of God preached, preached. He says that women should not be cooking every time. Sometimes they should force their husbands to go and cook. And I told her that my Bible says the woman should be submissive. And that is what we learned in our church today. Now she has another belief system. I have another belief system. The things we hear form our belief system. That is where confusion has started. Denominational compatibility. We are talking about heartbreak. Because if you don't sort this out, one day the man will come. You, you don't even believe everything I'm saying. You don't even pay tight, but I pay tight. You don't even do what I am doing. I beg, I don't tire for this relationship. Ah, please now forgive me. Denominational compatibility. But imagine a scenario now. What you are hearing. The lady you want to marry. You are hearing the same thing at the same time. Do you know I will preach, preach, preach. If you get to a point of you will look at each other. Because I have said something that concerns the two of you. It means I've heard it. So I will go for a seminar. The man will preach, preach, preach. They will say one thing to us. We look at each other and smile. Because they have said the thing we need to address. Why? Because two of you need to be hearing the same person. When you are going to a seminar, hold him, come. Hold her, come. If they can't come, write it down. Give them to read. She used to, she used to give me notes to read, though. I used to give her to read. Denominational compatibility. I am not telling you what we feel. It will never be. Denominational compatibility. This will be the last week you will take those medicines. Say amen. For my eye to go straight to your bag of medicine. The next one you will carry into here will be a bag of money, not a bag of medicine. Today, you came late. Did you come to win recharge card today? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So do you understand anything about denominational compatibility? Try and two of you should be listening to the same prophet, the same teacher. When you listen to me, let me tell you the truth. My wife and I were in courtship. This thing almost cost us serious problems. It almost cost us problems in courtship. But God saved us. She picked up a book. And she read the book. And I used to usually give her a book to read. And she gives me some books to read. But there is authors I don't know. You know marriage books are plenty. Not every marriage book you should read. Are you hearing me? Not every marriage book you should ever read. She read one book. And in the book, the author says, you must go and ask that young man how the father used to do the mother. How they used to do the father and the mother are doing all this thing, all this thing. And I believe in regeneration. I believe that what affects my father can't affect me. I believe that my father's character is not able to influence me. Do you understand me? You know, you, many of you are not pulling up what I'm saying. And then she read the book and she, before she could open up saying, said, how, how is this, how is this? I said, which book did you, who to, where did you go to? She said, she read the book. I said, who gave you that book? She mentioned the person. I said, you, I got angry. Because she reminded me things I don't believe in. Like somebody coming to tell you that his spirit is pursuing and you know that his spirit is not pursuing. So from that day henceforth, she threw away the book. Listening to one, and then in the church where we at that time, they give us material to read on relationship on marriage. After have you finished this material? She says no. I said, why did you leave it to go and leave, read another book we don't believe in? She apologized, and that book strictly what they wrote in that book wasn't scriptural. They say that in Christ I was a new creature, all things are passing. But in that book they are writing that your family problems can enter your marriage. I said no, I don't believe in that. Do you understand that? I said, me! I don't believe in that. It's why you believe that happens. Doctor tell you you are sick. If you say you are sick, you are sick. Doctor, now body you see, oh, my spirit man is not sick. I will take your drugs. But my spirit man is in charge of this physical man. So that I'm not in charge of this thing you read. 
She hadn't seen me angry like that that day. So immediately she dropped the book. That I can remember vividly. She apologized. Do you know what I'm saying in essence? If you are studying something totally different, your lady is studying something totally different, you'll be binding and casting. What is disturbing this man? What is all over this man? They don't even listen to one prophet, read one book, study one, have one dimensional goals, denominational compatibility, academical compatibility, one B. Academical what? Compatibility. Sometimes the lady may be more educated in a union, likewise the man. But there must be an agreement in the first place before you, jo- you two are joined together. I've seen men who didn't go to school, their ladies have first class, masters. They agreed. First of all, two of you agree. When we go out for function and they say your husband should come out to speak, and the husband begins to speak one time, one time, will you feel embarrassed? If she says I won't feel, truthfully I won't feel embarrassed. That is why academic compatibility. Are you two compatible? Well, every time you are going out, every time you are going out, you will not call me. But you, but in your picture I see you put the other men there, the other ladies there. You feel comfortable to go out with them. You don't feel comfortable to go out with me. Maybe he knows you will distress him. Academic compatibility. You should be open to tell him this is my level of education. This is our level of education. And I think me. This is my level of education. I am stopping here. I want to do business. Will you marry me or not? You go and be reading what you want to be reading. Are we agreeing? Not after now we finish. You say, I have, this one is a graduate. I am not a graduate. Can you imagine talking to me anyhow? Two of you should agree. That is a heartbreak. For a man to talk to you like that, that is what? Insult and heartbreak. It's to come break shot here like a dose here. So two of you should agree. This is my academic qualification. No? This is the level I've gotten to. I want to further it. I don't want to further it. Like my wife, I told my wife, you will further your own. No? Me, the next course I'm doing is how to do with uh, Bible courses. You can go and be studying what you want to do. Me, I want to do Bible courses. Academic compatibility. Agree. So that tomorrow, somebody will not put down the pocket and say, did you go to school? Is it not me that uh, because I married you, because I... I, uh, my certificate, I came to marry you. Did you go to school? Heartbreak. So, sort that academic compatibility before you say yes. Young man, look at, I know you love me. I know you love my character, but look at my level of education. Young lady, I love you so much. I know you went to school. I know you went to university. I went to polytechnic. Are you hearing me? Spell it out. Don't be covering up this. I know you went to polytechnic. I went to university. Will you agree? Let them agree first. Because after all, now certificate they define. No, be certificate. Did you understand me? Certificate. What do you submit to do? No, be waiting certificate. They, they write for certificate. That is why people who have handwork and employ people who have paper. So, you people should iron it out. The next compatibility. Societal compatibility. I, I love this one. Societal compatibility demands that you ask, is she outgoing? Am I outgoing? Many are introverts and some are extroverts. If the young man is outgoing and you are not outgoing, that will be a problem. For instance, hey, you can't see my wife anywhere. Even before we became a pastor, you can't see me anywhere. I watch her, I say, oh, this one, no, they go anywhere at all. Anywhere. The only place you see her is her work, church. Work, church, God. And you know my life is work, house, church, house, church. So you, you are the party type. Go with the man who likes, you know, Christian party type. When I'm saying this is a church, of course, you know what I mean. Not where you go and get yourself drunk. No, don't drink alcohol. No, acting type. Uh, so, you know, it, there is a way we can pass out for you without you going to Genesis. Chicken Republic, mostly ice cream. You are the acting type. Go for the acting type. Societal compatibility. They like going out for function. Look at her. This you know her pastor. How do I know who I should marry? I'm telling you now. Look at her. Is she the outgoing type? Is she out the is she a society person? Some persons who are society persons are very bad. Some are society persons and they are very good. They are calm, cool headed, but they just like going out. Look at them and ask, Oh, this one is the outgoing type. I'm the outgoing type too. 
But love does what? Covers multitude of sins. Sometimes you can also meet someone who is not the outgoing type, but you are the outgoing type. But because of love, the person will su- suppress and sacrifice. We talked about compatibility factor. Now we are talking about number two. Accessibility factor. Access. Accessibility factor. Let's say it's accessibility factor. Some people are not saying, you know, they, they think I'm looking at their mat. Want to go? Praise the Lord. Don't mind me, I'm joking. My husband, why I won't marry day for Ghana. I did for Nigeria. For two years, and I don't see each other. And he's a man, and he has blood in his body. You, you have blood in your body. Two years, you people have not seen each other. Thank you. Somebody say thank you. Thank you. You are the Holy Spirit. You are angel. Even angel from heaven came to the earth and slept with daughters of men. Then you, one year, two of you didn't see each other. And you say, you are like that. Nothing happened. Thank you again. Accessibility factor. You cannot be in Kotonu and your husband is Kafanchai. And you are telling me that relationship will work. They will be cheating. Yes, you can travel out for work. Once in a while, you must come back. One month, two months, three months. But tell me one year. No, no, take your family there. And if you start in courtship, in relationship, talk about marriage. Accessibility factor. Are you people accessible to each other? This type of courtship and friendship creates room for lack of commitment, which in turn leads to cheating, which in turn leads to heartbreak. Every the person you see every day, you talk with the person every day, you mingle with the person every day. But if I don't see you every day, I'll be mingling with somebody every day. I don't know if you understand me. Accessibility factor, be accessible to each other. You can imagine my wife saying, yes, between the ministry, let me be doing something else. I'll come and be meeting you. If by adventure we have pastors, lady, female pastors, they will be sitting close to me. And I am open to any kind of evil and temptation. But she has to be here. Say, I could die for her. For my marriage to work. Accessibility was fact that two of you should be accessible to each other. If you want to get really, if you really want to progress to marriage, two of you should be accessible to each other to avoid heartbreak. You will quickly fall in love with the one you see if you hardly see the one you love. Did somebody hear that? You will quickly fall in love with the one you see if you hardly see the one you love. Accessibility factor. The Bible says you two will leave your parents and cleave to each other. There is no cleaving together. If over a period of time the man is in the North Pole and the woman is in the South Pole. Cheating leads to heartbreak. Just as distance in relationship leads to cheating. So two of you work out a way that you must see each other. Once in a while, in an open place. Not in a close place. If you people are not married, to avoid yam and gold being left in the same room. Number three, manageability factor. No, we are talking about how to overcome heartbreak in relationship. Today's one is not too, it's not too long. Today we are not taking too much time. After this, we'll pray together and we'll call it a day. Manageability factor. Anger management, number one. Every human has a level of temperament. Can you bear or tolerate his or her temperament? I love you. I love you. You love me. My calm down. Look at the way he talks to people first. Don't judge him the way he talks to you. Calmly look at seven and a half what? What is the name of that thing we watch? Seven and a half days. How many of us have seen seven and a half days? That the lady finally, Mrs. Johnson finally married Jim Ike. Seven and a half days. She tried seven days. Different, different characters. She ended up with Jim Ike. Most of them have temperamental issues. Most of them talk at it. Most of them no training. And he ended up with Jim Ike. Seven and a half days. I told you next month we'll watch a good movie here. 
look at somebody like this. You will not judge them the way they talk to you. Sometimes look at the way they talk to another person. Because the way they relate with another person, one day they will bring it to you. If the relationship is still fresh, they will reveal everything. So be monitoring the way they talk with the next person. What people offend them, what is their temperament? I used to be temperamental so hot. My wife told me, change. She changed me, and I changed. Some people can be changed, but if you watch, they can't be changed. Move away. Anger management. Some persons can be changed through anger management sections and counseling. So he recommend them to such places. Some people get unreasonably angry for a genuine reason. Why some get unreasonably angry over on serious matters? When you see somebody getting mad, angry over on serious matters, my dear, the person not turn you to boxing back, be careful. That is anger management. We talked about manageability factor. B, economic management. Economic what? Somebody say economic management. Are we learning anything in this teaching house? Are you really learning anything? If you are a manager and she is a spender, you will feel hurt and the relationship will not function well. Some ladies can save. Some men can spend. Like two of us now, my, me and my wife, she saves more than me. Men are always spenders. Some ladies, some ladies are spenders too, but my wife saves more than me. So if I want to save something, I used to give it to her. So sometimes if I want to take the same, I say, please, I need to borrow it. I will still give you back to save it. She said, next, I don't give me anything to save for you again. You, call, you still come and take it and say, give me now. Men are spenders. <laughs> but I do it reasonably. Don't be a spender and go and marry a manager. There's a problem with fire on the mountain. So check out if she's a manager and you're a spender. Do you know that as I was coming back, I saw this steady boy, 15,000. The money you gave me to go and register for my exam, I used it to buy the teddy bear. You give me another one next week. I say, why did you do this now? Why did you do this now? Next week I'll give you money. My dear young man, I dig in your grave. Hmm. It's pointing. One day you will go home. You gave me money to cook pots of soup. You reach out to see gary and granite on the table. You tell you use the money to buy a, a, a wig bone. So you watch out for the person. Who is this kind of person? To avoid pastor, I'm dying in this marriage. God forbid you will not die in any marriage. So you study, open your eyes now. These messages are being recorded. If you need them, they can send it to you in the group. Or even in your phones, anytime you come here. You listen to them over and over. Sometimes you think you have heard something. When you go and play with me, when I listen to my message again, I say, ah, when did I say this? When we climb up, we are not the one talking. It's through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I listen to my messages. And I think, when did I say this? When I read prayer points in the message too, I pray too. And God answer. In my heart, in bedroom, when I'm praying, in the message, I will join and pray. Because I am not the one not speaking. God is just passing through a vessel. So you can listen over and over and see here. Economic factor. If both of you have different level of spending, my dear, that family, it will be you. So, if you are a spender, she's a spender, one holiday. Those kind of family, before you know, have strength, issue. This one, issue, because people don't take time to save for all those things. So, are you econo- economic? Look out for somebody who is economic. I said we are going to talk about factors to prevent heartbreak in courtship. And also talk about factors that you will put in place to prevent heartbreak in marriage. Now, number two. Factors you must put in check to prevent heartbreak after marriage, as in marriage now. We'll talk about divinity factor and we we'll talk about humanity factor. Then we we'll take our questions and answers. I believe we'll close before sharp seven. Divinity factor. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 33. Factors you need to put in place so that you will not have heartbreak in marriage. Those of you now who will be getting into marriage between now and December, somebody here, they are going for your introduction between now and December. Mm, that is true. Somebody here, they are going for introduction between now and December. Everybody is looking at each other face, 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 face. Who will be the person? Who will be the person? Not the young one, so I won't come. If it's a child, I will not come. 
Wives, do what? Talk to your husband. Is it what the Bible says? Wives, do what? Submit to your own husband. Did he say to another husband? Submit what? That own is very important. You see some women, they submit to their pastor. Submit to other men in the air, but when they enter, they don't respect their husbands. Submit to your own husband. That is how love. You want love, sweet love. As to the Lord, the next verse. For, her, for the husband, Bible just come down. Say for you, the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church. He is the savior of the body. The next verse. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so wives should also submit to their husbands in everything. Husband, husband, man, what do you do? Love your wives, just as also Christ loved the church and gave Himself for you. There is the man that does the loving. The woman does the submitting. She does not love me. She does not love me. No, 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 no. Love her. She will submit. He does not love me. He does not love me. No, submit to him. He will love you. Did anyone understand the man? This man does not even love me. This man, as a young expenser, you submit only out of three things that the lady should submit. Spirit, soul, and body. You submit spirit, soul. You don't submit body. This is on the spot, Rema. There are three components of human beings. And in marriage, you submit those three components to your husband. The man also gives the three components. In relationship, you submit spirit, soul, but you don't submit your body. Submit spirit, how? The spirit of, can two work and say they agree? Agreement is done with the spirit and your soul. Your soul is your mind. You reason to come now, let's reason together. Your mind, you submit your mind. Two of you reason together, your soul. The spirit will watch after him. He thinks the way I think, I think the way he is. But body, keep it. If you submit body in single in relationship, where is the heart, the flesh, the body, they will pity it. But if this people say, I know they do again, it's okay. God bless you, I move. That person submitted spirit and soul. The body, his heart was intact. You don't give your heart out. You hold the body, the heart. I didn't write this thing on my notes. That's when I tell you, we come with our notes. Holy Spirit reveal their own. You submit your spirit soul. When you get married, you submit spirit soul and body. Everything to the man. Everything to the woman. Body belongs to the man. Body belongs to the woman. Spirit belongs to the man. Spirit belongs to the woman. Spirit soul and body. God is the one who owns everything that belongs to man. Spirit soul and body. But when once the man or lady is married, the man shares the place of God with the woman. That's why Sarah called Abraham my Lord. And we have only one person called Lord, God. So when once you are married, that man is like a God to you. He is your Lord. Praise the Lord. My spirit, soul and body, praise the Lord. My spirit, soul and body, praise the Lord. You are praise God, spirit, soul and body. Woman, you are singing, my husband, my spirit, soul and body belongs to you. This temple belongs to you. You understand me? The spirit soul and body now belongs to man. But in relationship, what did I say? Spirit, give. Soul, give. Body, hold it. What is anything that has to do with blood? Your heart, your skin. He does not unlock until he pays. It's the payment of the diary that unlocks. Are you hearing me? So spirit, soul, and body belongs to God. Belongs to husband. Like now. A married man, a married woman can say prayers for you and God will answer. They have ties in these three realms of spirit, soul and body. They have ties with God. A young, man, a young person can marry to, can pray to God will answer. But there are prayers are in level. That's why when I pray, I pray for my heart. And I say again, without stress, eh? marriage, there will be introduction this December. To those who have are set, those who are set, I say it will come to pass in the name of Jesus. You want another introduction of my wife? So I'm shouting amen louder than everybody. Nobody is coming for your introduction again. No? <laughs> you are shouting for them. That is a good wife. Now, from the scripture we read, we say divinity factor to avoid heartbreak. Love from the husband. Husband, you must love the wife. When you get married, man, you go love who. She will, she will not insult. She will make mistakes. You go love. 
She will do things that you don't like. You go, Lord, when you shout to me, she don't get the option. You must love. You go, go back, you go, love. When you shout too much, you go, apologize. Or you know, we'll give you better food. And you know, go kill her. The touch her, the brother will come. I'm telling you the truth. You don't do that. Don't touch a woman. Don't beat her. There are some deep, deep teachings that should be given. But the young, young people are here. And the weather is not friendly. So let me control myself. Now, how? Respect and submission to the wife and the husband. From the wife to the husband. Forgiveness from both parties. Sacrifice and service to God from both. That's divinity factor. Number two, humanity factor. Before we take our questions and answers. Humanity factor. The golden rule, number one, in humanity factor. The golden rule states, do what unto others. What you want them to do unto you. This guy, he hardly calls me. You, how many times do you call him? She hardly buys me something. How many times do you send her a charge card? Do unto others what you want them to do to you. Take that young lady by surprise. You have not been taking her out. Call her out. Take her out. I'm not talking about uh, taking somebody out that you want to woo to the bed. No. Somebody you love, you want to marry. Take her out. Ladies, can I shock you? Take the man out too. During Valentine, during relationship, during during uh, birthdays, don't buy boxer again. You have bought the boxer where well. Don't buy boxer and sing. We don't want boxer and sing less again. We are not wearing the are you seeing box and sing less in me? Buy the one on top. Not the one they will not be seeing. Buy the one they will see. My wife shocked me one day when we were saying we are in school. We are coming back. She told me she wants to take me out. My birthday was like tomorrow, this night. She said she wants to buy me something. Then I've not even told her I want to marry her, but in us we knew we were going to settle down. You know when you know this thing will happen, but we have not said it. We know. We just know this thing don't this game don't cut. But we know just one open my talk and we knew. But it was getting close to me saying it. She took me out, bought me one jacket. We, we priced it in nine thousand. And she know just small small money that I giving her for school pocket money. She got that nine thousand. She let me go and buy something. Nine thousand. Say hey. And she has not even been buying me things of like one thousand five hundred before. She just bought nine thousand. Me at that stage, seven, I never come up five thousand buy clothes for myself. Nine thousand. I used to wear one pullover that has blue, white, blue. You see my wardrobe so clean, and it's up to three years, four years. If I wear it now, you just think in you. I treasure it like this. Eh? There is a, a spirit behind some kind of special gift that you will keep the gift. Eh? You will keep the gift. You will not throw it. Even when it's old, you will still take give it away. I've given out clothes, but that one I can't give it away. Because I was touched that day. So ladies, enough of somebody say enough of boxers. <laughs> the men are echoing it. Men say enough of earring, enough of earring, enough of enough of perfume. Every time perfume one five, earring one five. No, Do, uh, upgrade. Somebody say upgrade. Okay. See women. According to your level, no allow any woman push you go village. Oh. Praise the Lord. According to your level. So we are talking about humanity factor. Not to uh, uh, break hard to yourself. Do unto others what you love them to do to you. If you want love, do what? Give love. If you want respect, do what? Give respect. If you want care, do what? Give care. I love love with me. I know the joke with love. Any, anywhere I see love, that they are talking about love, you see me and my wife there. But we just want to increase. See, leave this thing. What is waiting for my love life like this? Now it's just small money. And it's coming. Imagine small money. I say, this love class, we are not holding it today here. We want to just shut down Genesis and hold love class there. You think we can do it? OPM shut down. O, uh, OPM, that the Chief of the shut down uh, Meridian. This hotel. La Meridian. The Meridian Hotel in Jerry shut it down, carried the whole children in his house. Nobody entered that evening. That is where everybody has 200 children. Money speaks. You can tell Genesis, Genesis, this evening nobody enters. It's money. 
And God does what? He gives us to see. I love love. Anything that will just make people happy. Love, I just love it. It is coming. And you, many of you will be the champion and you will so say, I'm bringing for this one. I'm bringing for this. Like next love class now, we are eating popcorn, soft drinks, watching movies here. So between and that time, ah, daddy, can I send some money for some popcorns? Can I send some money for some soft drinks? So as we are relaxed like this, we remove this black tan, keep a TV, a bigger TV. Says, we are using this one, we are bringing a bigger TV. We we'll put it down. Everybody is relaxed. You are chewing. You will be doing yourself, but only you come that day. Because I will sit with my wife in front of you people and be chewing anyhow. So you come with your friends. Those of you who are up to the age, if you are a child, you come with a man here, you stay outside. <laughs> only you are permitted to come with the, you are permitted to come with your invite. <laughs> you come with your you come with your invite. No, when I look when is your invite when I'm teaching, I will know. I know this one is just invite, nothing is happening. But if something is happening, trust your pastor. I didn't fall from a tree. The way two of you be doing, I will know. But to those who are to the age of marriage, you are permitted. But even though you are permitted, your chair must not be too close to each other. Until you, somebody say, ah. <laughs> I'm, I will ask him question now today, why he left that chair to this place. You see that, okay, we are looking for fun. No problem. God bless us. Now we are getting to question and answer, but listen to this. The law of correspondence. It is what you think about that comes about. So, will I actually have a young man that will love me like this? If you are doubting, it is won't come. It is what you think about that will come about. I can tell you of all truth. I'm not lying. I'm standing before God. The kind of wife I have today, I've been thinking about her since. God, this is the kind of woman I want. Me, you know the kind of family I came out from. Sometimes they will give me problems. This one happened, this one happened. This one no happened. God, no Allah, the wife will go come add to the, this one happened, this one no happened. Because I will die on time. I told God, and the person I have is calm, sweet, honey, sugar. See the way he is treating you now after I'm not praising you. That is love class now. It's supposed to be you understand. So expect what you want. Expectation brings what you want. Just be expecting a calm man, a love man, a Monday morning man. God, I need this man. I expect him to come. I need this kind of lady. I'm a soft. I can imagine now that a soft man. You are so soft. You can't go marry somebody with a troublesome. No, 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 no. Expect what you want. Thoughts. And magnets. There are things people don't know. When you see Hindu, when they sit down, and they do it like you know, you know what they are doing? They are focusing their mind on something. They say it's yoga, so they are focusing their mind on something. When you speak in tongue, focus your mind. Don't weep. When you are praying and doing this, no, no, you are joking. That prayer is waste of prayer. Focus your mind on that thought. Have the time you sit like this and think, this is the kind of man I want. After you finish thinking it, open your mouth and speak it. It will come to pass in Jesus' name. It will come to pass. I used to pass mirror like this. They have entered, those of you young ones who have come to my house, who have entered my house and entered my wife's workroom. There's a big mirror there. Whenever I'm coming out, sometimes I'll go back to the mirror. Mark, you are a great man, don't forget. I'll rush out. You see, I think I'm a master. I do it. In the bedroom, sometimes, pray out. I'll leave everything. Bring that mirror. You, if you fail, you will be a disgrace. I'm talking to myself in the mirror. If you are there, you think you are mad. Sometimes 2 a.m. in the night. Come on. The things you are seeing manifesting, I don't joke with them. I don't sleep in the night. The two men, they do yoga, yoga, yoga for night. They are the play. I carry mirror, keep them up on the night. I said they are invoking faces in the mirror. Me, I invoke my own image. You, if you fail, you are a disgrace to this world. But you, are too, you are still playing with some destinies you should be talking to out. I pass again in that mirror, one in this close to the kitchen, one in the bedroom. I say, you will, you will not fail. You will not fail. Your father did not finish his house. If you don't finish your, his house and build your own, I'll pass again. Church must grow. You must pray it out. I want myself like this. 
the best hitting and beating is the one you beat yourself. The one you beat yourself. The best advice is the one you preach to yourself. Pastor, he did this to me. He did that to me. Should I break out? Should I leave him? If you are deceiving yourself, if you know that the man is not good for you, you don't even need an advice. You will tell yourself that this man, I don't need a counselor. I need to leave this person. If he does this in a relationship, he will do it in marriage. That's why some questions I don't answer them. For instance, he said, why ask me? He's telling me. What did that young girl tell me again? From Abuja. I be from Lagos. Yes, from Lagos. Say, Daddy, say, this one is telling me that this will happen. This will not happen. And I asked him, do you want that thing to happen? He said, no. Young girl, young friend of mine in, Abuja, in Lagos, Abuja, every time Abuja worships in living faith, but she's committed in love class. She's in the group too. Say, she told me this. About 16 years, 17 years old girl, I mean, 18, she's going to her 18, 19. See, he likes the young man so much. She loves him. I know he likes him. But he's telling me that he wants us to sleep together. I don't want... Daddy, what do you think I should do? I told her, should I tell you the truth, daughter? She said, yes. I said, you want to sleep with him. Because you have that spirit in you that knows that, that you shouldn't do that. Are you asking me? You, are, you, are, you want somebody to give you a reason to do it. And it's not me. Go and look for another person that will give you that reason. So some questions we are asking, we actually know the answer. We actually know the answer. Let me tell you this before we pray. Sincerity is one of the major causes. Lack of sincerity is one of the major causes of heartbreak and divorce. Insincerity is one of the major causes. How do I mean insincerity? Love must be sincere. Romans chapter 12 verse 9. To eight, ten. Hate what is evil. Cling to that what which is good. Be devoted one to another. Honor one another above yourself. Be sincere. Be sincere. Somebody say be sincere. Hear me. As I ran up. Don't tell a lady that you love her when all you want is her body. That is lost. And heartbreak will happen after you have her body. You, are you not saying what is leading to heartbreak sometimes? It's lost. They lost it after. You. Then when they have it, they finally I don't have her now. So the will not be wanted. If the one that used to call me every time, now I've given him, he's no longer calling me every time. He has eaten the food he wanted. That was lost. Insincerity. Don't tell a man you love him. When all you want is, is his money, after you get it, you will definitely move on and leave him heartbroken. Don't tell him this. You love him. When what you want is his money. Don't get into a marriage because of a man or woman's wealth. Status or where they work. You will be left heartbroken in the marriage if they lose that place you once hide. Oh, this one is working in shell. That is why I want to marry him. You will shell off your life. Should in, the, should in case in the marriage he stops working in shell, you will not regret. Will you not walk out of the marriage? Be sincere to yourself. Don't tell him or her what you are not. They will be heartbroken in a relationship if they finally discover you are not what you told them. If you claim to love, here is the syllabus of love. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4 to 8. Here is the syllabus of love. The summary of all my teaching. The summary of Everything. First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 13. 4 to 8. Here is the summary of love. Pastor, what is love? What is love? Look at it. Love is patient. That man must be patient with you. Pastor, how do I know who I will marry? The man will be patient with you. You will be patient with her. Love is kind. The person will be kind to you. You will be kind to each other. Pastor, how will I know to somebody who will not break my heart? Love does not envy. That you are more successful than the man, the person will not envy you. That you are more outgoing, you are more celebrated than him, they will not envy you. How do I know a man who is a good person for me? Love is not boastful. The person will not be boasting about himself when he's with you. It's not conceited. The next one, next verse. Love is not conceited. That is deceptive. Does not act improperly. 
improperly means he does not he has no control whenever he comes to you. Improper behavior. He's not selfish. Every time the man wants to satisfy himself first. He does not care about your feeling. He's not provoked easily. Bam! His anger. Bam! I've told you. I've told you. I've told you. I have seen some people, they want them. And now come down and ask, are you two of you married already? Say no. And he's warning you like this. So when you people marry, what will happen? Say no. Some people kill themselves by themselves. He's not provoked. Does not keep a record of wrongs. When you remember something that happened before, it's for you to learn from it, not to use it to undo the person. Next verse. Find no joy in unrighteousness. Unrighteousness means something that is not right. So when you are wrong, you, you will not find joy in it. But rejoices in the truth. The next verse. Behind all things, believes all things, hopes all things, love endures all things. Love does not break out. Love endures. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. Love is the strongest thing. Somebody can prophesy to you, it will not happen. But love never ends. They will come to an end. Prophecy. As for languages, they will cease. This language I'm speaking, English will cease one day. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. Verse 9. I think we are supposed to stop by 8. But let me see 9. For we know in part and prophecy in part. That is all about the scripture. Love never fails. Should I tell you the biggest advice somebody advised me one day? When I wanted to start ministry, a father called me and my wife. We sat before him. He told my wife and told me, no matter what the enemy does, no matter how they attack you people, it's a young ministry I want to start. No matter they say this, they say that. This is what will keep two of you going. Wife, love your husband. Submit to him. Husband, love your wife. Love. Is it not just normal love? If father said it again, if you want to succeed the ministry, wife, submit your husband. Husband, love the wife. An advice I have never heard in my life that there is a spiritual strength and power force in love. Love never fails. That I have heard my wife sound like this. We pray together. Immediately we saw the answer. That's the power of love. Love is stronger than prophecy. Prophesy to me, Papa. What are you saying? Go deeper, go deeper. Leave the deepest prophecy. Go deeper in love. Go deeper what? In love. Did we learn anything about this preventing heartbreak? Can somebody confidently say, I can teach another person how to prevent heartbreak? You, you can. You've learned something. You are really, really blessed. Blessed. Put your hands together for Jesus. Now you are going to package your offering. We will give our offering, then you prepare your questions. As we give offering now, we we'll prepare your questions. We we'll take three, four, five questions. I will answer, my wife will answer, and we'll call it a day. Today we don't want to stay till eight, seven, five. This is five minutes past seven. By seven twenty, we should be done with questions and answers. We we'll have a group photograph. And because it's been long, we had a group photograph in love class. So let's do it today. And God will bless every one of us in Jesus' name. Lift that up and Be fast, share the envelope. Give, 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 give. Fast, 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 fast. Lift it up to heaven. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to appear before you. As we cast this offering, O oh Lord, stop every suffering in our lives and in our relationship in the name of Jesus. To those who are willing to get married already. You are claiming that prophecy of December. Tie your need to your seed. See, as I cast this seed, it leads to my need of relationship. And as you have done that, God will answer you in hundred foot in the name of Jesus for prayer. That's your offering. Now, questions and answers. Questions and answers. I'm going to take five questions. My wife will answer. I will answer. I will have some group photograph and call it a day. Don't be shy to ask any question. Just ask. Questions and answers.
Aleluia. Pastor, you said something about submitting your heart, your spirit, and your soul, and not submitting your body. body. In courtship. Yes. So, in a situation whereby your partner cannot satisfy you sexually, what will you do after marriage? After marriage? Yeah. Can I answer you? Sit down. I like that question very much. But first of all, I will answer the question by asking one question first. Then I will answer you. Some people actually go into sex because they want to know that the man must satisfy them in marriage so that they will not go and look outside because you must be satisfied. True, true be told, you must be satisfied. That is true. But let me tell you something. What of after checking to know whether he can satisfy you? He is a strong man. Everything good, complete. He is a 10 hours man. And after everything, he still did not marry you. And tell you, I have tested, I have run. Because you are not in his heart. So it's a question for question. And maybe, God forbid, the person has disease. Because before you marry, the pastor will not say, go and do tests. Go and do HIV tests. Go and do other blood tests. Every, me and my wife, we did all the tests we could do it. Before they say, genotype test, everything. Before we say, oh yeah, go ahead. Now, paraventure, in the place of testing, he had some blood disease you don't know about. And the thing entered. In the place of testing, pregnancy entered. Or in the place of testing, you are not satisfied. In your thick score, and some good. Sex, 300%. This one, 500%. But at the end, he did not still marry, marry you. What will happen at the end? Then, now, you, you find that you will just keep on, you will keep on heartbreak. You find that you keep on seeing series of men testing and going, testing and going, testing and going, testing and going, testing and going. Now, let me tell you the truth. The answer to that is we are not fools. We all have psychological capabilities. There is a way you can look at a man to know that this man is sexually active. The way he talks to you, the way he acts, and sometimes the way you look at their body, you know quickly that he's sexually active. I'm not, I'm not talking about impotency or sexually active. Do you understand me? If they are impotent, sometimes nothing drives themselves. They don't talk about anything that has to relate to romance. They don't even waste their time because they don't know how it feels. But you know that these ones are romantic already. Good. The issue of does it last one hour or two hours, they can build it up. There are retroviral drugs. These drugs. There are some, a doctor that was supposed to be here today, he didn't come. There are some drugs that can help build it up. There are some exercises that can build it up. There are some food that can help you too. Should I tell you something? We are open house. I am not the sex sex type. I am the child with talk, make things going. But when I got into a relationship, I told myself the truth. I read books. I have a book called uh, by Dagwa, uh, this Smith, what is the name of that book? Marriage, that we are, we are reading about marriage. About marriage. Um, the modern marriage. The book is as, almost as good as this pulpit. The height is like this. Christian book. They show how to have sex in the book. Christian, what did I say? Christian book. A Christian, they will teach you. So don't be afraid. There are Christian movies too that will teach you. Because now you are married. You learn it. So the man watches. He learns it. There are some perfect exercises that ladies do. There are some exercises men do too to make them laugh. There are some things they do too, glitching the core, to make them not come earlier. Do you understand me? So this is for married people. So leave that. What if it is not a, a somebody that lasts? No, 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 no. That is not a problem. They train. The first thing, know that this man is potent. And you see it psychologically. You will know. But for a man to look at you who is impotent to deceive the lady and to say you are potent and you enter my that man self is already carrying cause for you to deceive the lady to that. Even if I am a lady, I'm, I have my right to walk out. Because it's a deception. But shall they don't join on and I cannot walk out. You have to pray it to walk. Pray and start the engine. Praise the Lord. So, young lady, it can actually be trained. People can train. You can even meet counselors. It's just that let the man love you. If two of you love each other, you can listen to each other. Let's go and talk this out. I will tell you a story too. There's a young lady who ran out of marriage because of the thing too. He went for counseling. They asked, what thing happened? Pastor said, calm down. Life story. What thing happened? Calm down. Did your husband beat you? No. 
Did the mother in law be to know? Did the sisters insult you know? What happened now, Pastor? Pastor, what happened? The only thing you heard is too big. It's too big. It's too big. The lady keeps shining. It's too big. The pastor and us advised him. Advised the lady. The lady went back. The lady came back another morning. It's too big. They advised the lady. So one day, like months later, they brought the woman unconscious to church that they should pray. They prayed, 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 prayed. The woman should come back to life. They didn't know that this man has his engine to want to destroy this woman. So the man that was counseling this woman eventually came out. Life story. And so it did not this lady that been coming about this engine. Go on. They prayed, they resuscitated him, they brought the man. The man now came. The man now told him, the marriage counselor told him, do you know what is called lubricant? Most of us here, we are grown up. Lubricant helps that no matter the size, it goes freely. From that day, henceforth, the man never knew what was lubricant. So there is a solution for anything. Let it be big, let it be small, anything. There is lubricant. There is another thing. I'm, I, God sees my heart. I'm not teaching any young man here to go and test run anything. No. Are you hearing me? This is love class. We are preparing ourselves for marriage. Okay, the next question. This is love class. The last question. Since there are no more questions. Any more questions? Should we share the grace now? You have a question? Okay. Last question. Second to the last. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Question for a friend, and um, she's about to get married, and this person she wants to get married, so she don't even know the person's house. Yes. She doesn't know anything about the person. Yes. And we're like talking about it like some days ago. We're like, let's go and notice your husband's to be house since the marriage is already this month. And the guy was like, don't worry, instead of you coming to my house, it's a pastor from his own saying. Instead of you coming to my house, I'll come to Port Harcourt. Coming to Port Harcourt, the man did not actually tell us the exact hotel he lodged because he said he came with his pastor and an assistant pastor is not allowed. And he's giving us like trickish things like, sounds like, please now let's just come to your house, let's just know where you're staying. Just like, don't worry, after the wedding and everything. Should my friend still continue with this marriage? Or? No. You don't know. Do you pay for a good? Do you pay for goods that you have not seen? No, now let's be practical now. I'm telling you this. Now, Pastor Gusti Priyo, imagine the young lady now does not like bachelor house or all these things. Maybe you don't even know if the young pastor, the person is squatting with somebody and they don't bundle you come up from Potakos, go there. You know, go wrong, come back. What God has joined together. It is, it is, you are my daughter, Victoria, let me tell you the truth. It is, more than charges for somebody to do that kind of big mistake. It is 21st century. Now, waiting, they happen for Nigerian people, won't happen like this. Oh. Waiting, they use from Facebook, I married you, I married you, and the person come from abroad. They are looking at where is the person is crippled that came out. Please, marriage is forever. Marriage is forever. Oh. Do you go to Jumia blindly and say, I click this and bring it, you pay money, they should bring it. You check the goods. You check the specification. You go to shops. I want to buy this. You check it. I okay. This is good. This is what I. You pay for it. You don't know the demand. It's only picture you see. One on one. Yes. You, you have not got to know the place. Like no. The day when my when this is this is my wife now. When my wife and I wanted to go get married, she knows me. I know her. Even her father still wanted to know my village. Father still wanted to know my village. I said they can go and ask. In Igbo land, that is it. what they do. They won't tell you. My mother, brothers and sisters, we go to her place, ask questions, she will not know. The father, we come to her place to ask questions, you will not know. They still do it secretly today. I don't know whether my own people did or not. But the father said, I text him the address. Text him my compound. Tell him the three he will see. Tell him everything we see there. Go. Whether he went, I did not know before. We are not just in a world. Are, you don't know where the after marriage now they will say this guy man now can still come say the marriage will be in Portacot. After everything, he say bye bye. The lady will not be there and call him. I never knew. I never knew. Victoria, let me tell you the truth. Me, Pastor Mark Miracle, I said no. She should not. She should know the. If she cannot go, she should send somebody. It's not even advisable for her to go. But if she's going, she shouldn't go alone. So she should send somebody. 
she should send somebody. Oh. Three things may happen. You go, maybe the boy has, they are squatting. You love the boy too. All the picture the guy was painting. I have this. I have this big picture. The guy now have even told you, don't come. I will come. And you are saying you should come. You say, don't come. That should tell you primarily that he's trying to hide something. He's trying to protect something that when you have already said yes, you can't run out of it. Men, some men are wicked though. Some men are wicked. They can do anything to just have you. I'm telling the truth. I have seen men in this Nigeria. They planned marriage. They finished everything. That real marriage paid everything. Till today they don't know where the lady is. They find out that the person they use the girl for money, medicine. They just they needed that girl at all costs. They say this is their village. It was not their village. They rented their this is our community. Father post that one. They even went see father, see mother. Somebody put a person, person post. This is my company. They rented this. Is my everything was lying. See today they have not seen the girl. I will say no. Okay, let me put this this way. If it's your daughter, let's leave your friend. If the person is your daughter, answer this question. Will you accept it? No. So this is the easiest way to answer this kind of question. If it's my child. My wife and I, will we accept that kind of marriage? No, let me, friend, now put it to your shoe. It is your daughter, your child. Somebody wants to marry her. You, your mother, you, the mother, you don't know the place. You know the young man. He has, maybe you know he's a good person, but you don't know where they are taking your daughter to. Tell me the truth, will you? Me, I won't. Any more questions? I've answered the way I can answer. Any more questions? Okay. So please, what if you're in a relationship and I would say you're having a mixed feelings, but you don't just like him. But not like he has wronged you. He hasn't wronged you, but you just want to be on your own. Should you walk out or you should speak to the person and you feel the person is not mature? Praise, like... praise the Lord. I know your, your question already. Your question, I will let you know. I've thought about communication factor. Yeah, I see that. I've thought about communication and when I was starting the message, I said you can leave someone without breaking the person's heart in a matured way. Sit the person down. I sat my wife down. She sat me down. She told me this is the thing she does not like. I told my wife, you need to talk. Anytime they talk, Nami go talk from beginning to the end. You need to talk. And today is that character she does not talk. I tried to change. Try, try, try. I could not. And I left it. I said this is her character. So open up. I thought in the last class, say, we said so many things. If she's smelling, Tell him he's smelling. If his brother is dirty, we did it here. You see that most of the things we are doing now is addressing most of the issues. Sit that young person down. Talk to the person. I like you as a person. You are a good person. I like you so much. In fact, this is now I will teach about how to appreciate people. You don't start talking to people. If you want to correct people, the act of correction, I've taught it before, I will still teach it. You don't start to correct people by telling them the bad, their bad part. The act of correction. If not, next time you, that person will not want you to correct. Start from their good part. If you see Jesus Christ, the whole of Revelation, when you go to the church, the church of Pagamos, that are holy, that are this, but you go to this church, that are clean, that are this, but you start with their good things. Say, I like you. You are calm. This is what I know about you. This is what I like about you. But don't start with complaints. You understand me? The person will listen. If the person cannot listen to you, even have that kind of state. They know the person is not someone you can even communicate with. It starts with communication. Try the communication aspect first. The next love class, you tell us what has happened. If it's actually your question or you are asking for somebody. So the last question now. Last question, right? Seven that we will leave. Because concerning what she said about not being in love with the person. Yes. In a situation whereby you're comparing that person with another person. Okay. Uh, can you still elaborate the question? Like, for example, I'm no longer in love with, with this b- her. But you have a, another choice you are trying because to do. Because I'm seeing another person. someone who is better, better than, than her. But I him. love her. But you love him. Yes. Okay. Now, let me tell you something. When in finding, in finding, make sure it's the man that is finding you. That is the scripture. In relationship, make sure that the man is finding you. What you do as a lady is you give green light. Say, he that finds a wife, not the woman that finds a man. Do you understand me? If not, Jesus Christ loved 
every other person, but he built his church on Peter who loved him back. You may like somebody, but that person you are taking does not like you, might be the one that truly loves you. I don't know if somebody is following this. So be sure that no matter what you are seeing in this second person, this is what you want. But be sure that that person is not the real one that is actually loving you back. I don't know if somebody is getting it. I love her. There are so many other persons that I loved. But I saw that she's the one that will love me back more. So I went for her. So you may have options, and we always have options. That's why we are teaching all these things. So you weigh everything we have taught now. This is actually what I am seeing in this man. But genuinely, speakingly, speaking genuinely, if you had made a mistake and you were with the first person, you can correct yourself, honestly. But it all boils down to doing it maturely. All boils down to doing it mature, in a matured way. You tell him that this is what I find out. And you are not going to tell him you are leaving him because of this person. That is childish. Give it time before you make it open. And if you are leaving this one person, my advice is you don't leave one person and enter another person. And for the next one year, we are still not married. I leave another person, another person, one year. If me or I may leave, I am leaving somebody and say yes, another person. Maybe in the next two months, three months, or three, one year at most, I want to settle down with that person. I don't know if I answered the question. Let me tell you the secret of what made me just the third only pastor and I got married to him. He's the only man I met. The only man I gave my heart to because if I like I've said it before, many guys have met me before him, but I'll tell them that no. We can just be friends. If they really force themselves, they want to, they want to, they want, they want, they want. And I say, we can, we can just be friends. No emotional attach. Nothing, no emotional. We can just be friends. Normal friends. So that I can be, I, you know, hold me. Yes, you can easily leave. Don't give your heart. But let your love grow. Don't just tell the person I'm falling in love. Let's be, let's date. No, it doesn't happen that way. Just watch that person. Put up from friendship. The both of you will grow. That love will grow. You know that this person. No matter what, even though the person does not have, maybe you see other, your, the, the next guy have something you, you are expecting from the person you are dating. It will not move you. So, the friendship matters a lot. Grow with, let the both of you be friends first. Best friends first. Praise the Lord. What she contributed is actually truth. Like I told you, we are so close to the extent that we didn't propose to each other. At that point in time, if we didn't marry, we didn't wrong each other. Because we have not told anybody anything. Even in class, they'll be calling us husband and wife, but two of us, we have not even told each other anything. So leave it like that, open. Say open check. Don't leave it open. That's what I said. Give your spirit so. Leave the body first. Don't accept yet. Don't totally say I'm giving my body. Be watching. Be watching. Be watching. Don't just, don't just fall in. Just leave it at friend level. To get to a point, the man will say, marriage, I want to marry you. When that person has now brought marriage, you now weigh all the friends you have been keeping. And I say, who is the best God? Please, in all this person, who should I finally open up to? Not today. This person comes. Peter comes. Do you love me? The person never thought, finish, I love you. You give the person your heart. Tomorrow, James, come. You have not finished studying this person. Another person will come. You see, you see what you like better. This person comes. So just don't, be, don't easily give it in to all of them. I don't know if you understand me. Do you understand that question? I should answer. I should go back deeper again. I should prophesy deeper. <laughs> Please. If you want, and truly, if you have done all these things, to wrap it up, if you have done truly all these things we have said, you have done, but in line, you saw someone and God said, this is the right person to you. It boils down to what I say, maturely sit the person down. Tell the person, I like you so much, but I don't see a future. I don't see a marriage happening. The reason being that, start by appreciating the person, but the reason being that this, this a mature person will say thank you. Do you now understand me? Any more question? No question. Prayer. We are going to take two prayer points. Two prayer, two prayer points and we'll share the grace together. Let's turn to our feet and begin to appreciate God. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. We thank you. Appreciate you for this meeting. Thank you from the depth of your heart. Father, we thank you. Well, thank you. Blessed be your holy name in the name of Jesus. Say, oh God, my Father. Oh God, my Father. Anything. Anything. 
things that will make me that will make to me make mistakes in relationships. In relationship. Father, don't allow it to happen. Oh, don't allow it to Begin happen. to pray in the name of Jesus. Anything that will make us to make mistakes in relationship. Father, don't allow it to happen. I break out anything that will make me to have this faith, O Lord, that blood of Jesus against yourself and the devil will resist you now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God of heaven, God of heaven. If that young man if that young is the man, one you have made for me, the made for then me. let the wedding happen without any issues. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. He says, A broken courtship is better than a broken marriage. Say this prayer, O God of heaven. If the one I am in courtship with is not the right person for me, Father, dissolve the relationship and send me the right person. Pray in the name of Jesus. If the person I'm in relationship with not the right person, dissolve the person, dissolve, dissolve. I can't the person out now. Let the right person look at us now. In the name of Jesus, as we have spoken, so shall it be in the name of Jesus. We believe you were blessed with today's episode of Pure Gospel Moment. For prayers, testimonies, or further inquiries, you can reach Mac Miracle on plus two three four eight one two three two eight eight five nine three. That is plus two three four eight one two three two eight eight five nine three. God bless you real good.